evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome. We're going to go ahead and begin with our program tonight. Welcome, everybody, to the kickoff for the Queen Anne's County Goes Purple. My name is Sonny Jones. I'll be your MC for the event this evening, and I'm also proud to say that I'm a long-standing member of the Queen Anne's County Drug-Free Coalition. Before we begin with our program, I'm going to ask that Boy Scout Troop 464 come forward and present our colors. If everyone can please stand and remove your hats. Color guard, left face. Color guard, present the colors. Salute. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Two. Ladies and gentlemen, as we're walking off, can I have a nice big round of applause for Boy Scout Troop 464 presenting the colors this evening. Before we begin with our opening prayer, I just have a, a couple brief remarks. And I was thinking this evening about how much this event has progressed over the years. And there are three main things that I think we should all focus on this evening. The first is a celebration. A celebration of how much we have done over the years and how big this has gotten. All of the hard work that each and every individual, each and every organization here has put into this cause. And the hard work over the years that we have done, I think we need to give our, all of ourselves a round of applause for that. The second reason why I feel we're here this evening is for remembrance. Remembrance for those who have passed on before us who did not make it to this event because of their struggle with addiction. We're here to remember those individuals and to let them know that their memory did not perish in vain and that we will take those cherished memories of those individuals and move forward and continue in the struggle and fight for this cause. And the last thing I feel we need to do is focus. Focus on the current mission at hand, but also focus on where we're going to be a year from now, five years from now, ten years from now in this struggle. This is not something that will come to an immediate end. This is going to be a struggle for some of us for our entire lives, and for most of us until the problem with addiction, the struggle with addiction, is no longer considered a concern to society. So please keep those things in mind tonight. I'd like to now welcome the pastor of Community Outreach, Mr. Bobby Timms from the Kennel United Methodist Church for our opening prayer. I know him when he was a little boy. So I ask you to pray with me. Lord, we come to you tonight with praise and thanksgiving for the work you have done through faithful servants in this opioid battle. We are grateful for the victories won and the lives that have been saved. We ask you to continue to bless our first responders as they are the tip of the spear in our community. Lord, lift up and strengthen those that serve in support roles and in the follow-up care and recovery that is an equal part of our hope for a drug-free community. We ask that you open the eyes and ears of the community that we may all share and bring an answer to this opioid pandemic. Grant wisdom and discernment to our educators that they can intercede in the lives of our youth before addiction can take hold of another life. Father, may we celebrate and build upon the good work that has already been done and celebrate those that partner together to continue that legacy. Let us not rest on our past successes, but learn from them and give you the glory for people that have a heart for the broken among us. Grant us your strength that in the dark days that will come, we will remember that you and you alone are God and you have our back. Finally, Lord, let us stand united in this endeavor, no matter what other differences we may have, until the last parent, the last loved one, the last person gets that phone call or knock on their door with the worst news of their lives. Let us resolve together to make certain that we will not rest in this fight until we accomplish a drug-free community, a drug-free state, country, and world. Tonight we give you thanks for being among your people and hearing the prayers of our heart. 
Bless those that mourn, heal those that are broken, and strengthen those that stand united in this call from you. We are counting on you to see us through. In the name of Jesus Christ our Lord, we pray. Amen. Uh, before I call our first speaker, I'd like to ask for Town Commissioner uh, Mr. Tim McCluskey, if he's here, to please come forward for some remarks. And it's my understanding he has a birthday today. So we asked him to go first because apparently he has to be back to the home before the sun sets. Thanks, everybody. We're so fortunate to have such a beautiful, historic downtown. We've got a beautiful, historic courthouse. And I've been fortunate to be a town council member here for a long time. And I've seen this town square really look beautiful. But i got to say, like I've never seen it look as nice as it does tonight. It's just an unbelievable purple explosion. So it's, it's so nice. And I'm, I'm so thankful for the QAC uh, Coalition, Purple Coalition, to do this this year. We love having events that are downtown here. Thank you to Warren and his team, as well as Linda Friday and her team at the, at the uh, Chamber of Commerce. Please keep coming downtown. Thank you so much for doing this. One little plug I do want to give, down at the Centerville Wharf this weekend, on September 11th, we'll actually be having a, a great family event. We do it every single year. It's a kids fishing derby from five to seven. It's a free event if you've got kids that are under 16 and they want to try to go fishing. We, we provide the bait, we provide all the, uh, the fishing lines. You have an opportunity to win win a trophy, and then a, after the uh, after the fishing derby, when it gets to be uh, nighttime, we're going to watch a movie. The outdoor movie this year is ET. It's a, it's a classic that uh, old folks and young folks like as well. So thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thanks again. And again, happy birthday, Tim. Enjoy your evening. Okay, representing the Queen Anne's County Commissioners, Commissioner Jim Moran, you can come forward for some remarks. I guess I'm going to start off with uh, Bobby. Sonny here has never been little. I don't know where you got that information from. So uh, I want to thank everybody for coming out here tonight. I want to thank the Centerville Town Council for helping us uh, pull this off here in Centerville. We, we want to move it around every year. We want to educate as many people as we can and make it easy for them to, to come out here. Uh, you know, somebody asked me, you know, how does government fit in to the opioid, opioid epidemic? And, you know, short answer to us, it doesn't. But it, the long answer is it does because we support the people that know the best way to handle this. So, you know, I, I, I can't say enough about Warren and Kathy Wright and the Drug Free Coalition. And, and what they do. So give them a round of applause. And what's nice in Queen Anne's County is that so many people care and so many people are willing to help. Sonny's right. You know, you look back four years ago when, when we first did one of these, and it, the face of it changes. The face of it changes because the people change. The more people get involved. There's multiple uh, organizations in Queen Anne's County. Not my child. Is, is out there fighting the same fight that we're fighting and working together with everybody. So, you know, there's, there's a lot that goes on. And, and I want to give a shout out to uh, Linda Friday and Tracy for what they did for the, the uh, chamber and, and getting this all pulled off. And I got to give a big shout out to Paul Kirst. I mean, if you know Paul, this is his, his doing out here. So you know, thank you for that, Paul. Uh, you know, uh, and I also want to say that I believe all the commissioners are here tonight. I saw Steve, Jack, I saw Phil. I'm sure Chris is, is somewhere out there also. So, you know, we are we are totally committed to this. Uh, you know, when I first got involved, I think it was five or six years ago. Uh, and, and Jim Roy, I know you're still out there. You know, played a big part in me getting involved. And, and uh, the thing that we could do the most as, as county government is Go to those that are the experts and say, how do we fix this? What do we need to do? And then they would come back with a response. And what does it take? And, it, and it, honestly, it takes money. It takes funding. So, you know, the commissioners the, for the last four years has funded every time there's been an ask from the Drug Free Coalition. I can remember uh, five years ago in some of the uh, auditoriums and some of the junior highs, we put events on. Then we went to uh, our signs that are out there in, in I look at those signs every day. Every day I cross that bridge, I look at those signs and I look at the amount of people being 
affected in Queen Anne's County and the state, and keeping our fingers crossed that we're, we're making some headway. I mean, the, the numbers are, are down, uh, and I'll, I'm not going to knock on wood, but you know, I'm happy for that, and we'd like to see that to continue. And from there, we went to the Chris Heron at the schools, and then we just started another program, and, and I wanna, I'm going to give a shout out to Dr. Kane for allowing us to get into the schools. And that was always an issue that we seemed to butt up against, but you know, as Warren would call, we pulled the 18 together, and we go into the junior highs now, and, and we speak to the students. And there's always there's always somebody that is firsthand affected by the epidemic. And then we had the sheriff, Lance, myself, and, and a special speakers, and it, it, it was very gratifying. I mean, you know, a lot of us politicians are long-winded and I'm just as bad as the next one, but to be able to talk to those kids and to see their eyes and their faces and the connection that's going on there. You know, Sonny said earlier today that, you know, this is the long haul. This is not an overnight or one year or two year fix. It's the long haul. So I think the Drug-Free Coalition, to their credit, we have been targeting and working with younger adults, very young adults, in the fact that we want to educate them. We want to, the best way, the best way we can spend the, the funding for this and, and the biggest impact we can have is to never get these kids in contact with, uh, you know, these painkillers and, and opioids and, and heroin. So, and that's, that's what we're focusing on and, and I think we're doing a, a great job at that. And I just like to say, you know, again, to, to everyone out there that's working on this and sitting in one of these booths, Thank you, and God bless. Thank you, Commissioner Moran. Uh, next up, I'd like to invite Dr. Patricia Salins, and I apologize if I mispronounce your name, the Superintendent for Queen Anne's County Public Schools. Thank you. Oh, it's right up here. So, um, good evening, everyone. Although I can't see you, actually. It's not funny. Um, thank you. Thank you, for the, thank you for the opportunity to um, speak on behalf of Queen Anne's County Public Schools. I'm Patty Salins. For those of you who I have not had an opportunity to meet, I'm the new superintendent, and I'm super happy to be here and be a part of this team. Um, as I look out, and I do see everybody in their purple shirts, there's no doubt that there's a great foundation here that's already been spoken of, of the years that everyone has put into this epidemic. Um, most of us, if not all of us, have been personally impacted. That could be through... Um, a child, a parent, a co-worker, um, a spouse. So almost every single person, if not every person, is directly impacted by this, and that's why it's so important. And I am truly blessed to be able to partner with many of you in the community to be able to support our schools and send out our message. So we are excited as a district to be a part of um, Queen Anne's County Goes Purple, and we are also lucky enough to have been awarded some funding through the opioid operational command center and those funds i want to tell you a little bit about what we're doing with those funds um, in our schools and so through that grant our goal really is to look at building awareness so we want to make sure that we educate our students um, and we also want to address the stigma that is often attached to this um, illness and it really is an illness and so we have to remember that and we have to provide that assistance and that help uh, so basically what we're doing with those funds is we're campaigning um, campaigning as a school district um, in many different ways to get factual information out. It's always best to have the facts before you can make an informed decision. And so that's what we really focus on. And so we're doing that through uh, newspaper articles, through um, TV ads, uh, through radio ads, through billboards, um, even our newsletters that go out from our school principals. And another thing that we're doing is we're really focusing in on using a program, a life skills program, we're really focusing in on two things. One is self-esteem for our students and decision-making. Again, those two things kind of really do go hand in hand sometimes. So looking at self-esteem of our students and looking at making good decisions, again, based on factual information. And another thing that we're addressing through this program is looking at stress and how do we deal with stress. Um, a lot of times we don't understand that our students go through lots of stressors. As adults, we know we live with stress every day. And we have to compartmentalize that and we have to have skills in order to almost embrace that and use strategies to get through that 
And that's what our job is, that's what our role is in the school district, is to make sure that our students really are equipped with the skills necessary to be able to digest stress. And another thing that goes hand in hand with that is communication. So not only helping students to have a skill set to address stress, but really also how do I communicate when I need help? How do I advocate for myself? And in doing those things early on and equipping students with those skills early on, we hope that they are able to make good decisions and go places where they can get help to make sure that they don't make a poor decision um, to access something that could hurt them. Some other things we're doing actually in the schools, um, we have guest speakers that come in. A lot of them are community people that come in for guest speakers. We also have uh, assemblies with our students. Um, we do purple pledges and morning announcements, purple Fridays, and so we're doing lots of things like that just to promote um, within each school. So we're really happy to be partners. Um, this is obviously something that is near and dear to all of our hearts. It is a commitment together as a community. Together we are stronger and we know that. And so thank you for the opportunity to partner with you all and to do um, what's best for our kids and educate them. So thank you. Have a good night. Thank you, Dr. Salins. Next, I'd like to invite uh, your sheriff for Queen Anne's County, Sheriff Gary Hoffman, for some remarks. Good evening, everybody. I wanted to take first, if we could, and just pause and take a moment of reflection as uh, First Sergeant Jones, we always refer to him with our office, reminded us earlier, we're here for these victims of the opioid epidemic all their faces are here on our stage. So I'd ask if everybody could please just take a moment of silence and let's remember all of those people, our community members, our family, our friends that we've lost due to this opioid pandemic. I want to thank everybody uh, for coming to this event and the awareness that this event creates within our community. Amongst the families that are here that represent these members of our community who we've lost, the friends of these family members that are here, and the supporters who made this event happen, the community itself, and special thanks to the Drug Free Coalition for all of their help and efforts in getting this. Sadly, though, I wanted to say that we're still here. We have a lot of work to do. We have a lot of educational programs to put out there. We have a lot of resources to make, and we have a lot of trust to build with those who are addicted to opioids, opioids so that they reach out to us for their help. But as a community, we haven't given up. As you can see, Queen Anne's County goes purple, is still strong, and every year it's growing. And more and more people, more and more groups, and more and more organizations are joining this effort to make Queen Anne's County drug-free and also opiate-free. If we could, real quick, if I could bring up, I, I can't see anybody out here, but I see this bright yellow shirt over here. If I could bring up Lance Richardson for just one minute, because I want to talk about a partnership. This is the tour to Lance, everybody, as somebody <laughs> just said. So with his bright yellow shirt, welcome Lance. Lance got stuck in traffic, so I'm not sure. No, 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 I referee soccer, so I came right here. This is not the Lance Armstrong shirt. This community is a great partnership, a great collaboration of our agencies, and we're a small community. Everyone has a loved one, family member who's lost someone to this opioid crisis. We have a whole community of opioid orphans, is the new term, and uh, we're only going to survive this and overcome this in unity and in collaboration, working together. Everyone has to be a part of this. We appreciate everyone coming out tonight. Thank you. Thanks, thanks. I, want you to, I want Lance to stay up here for a minute because this is a message, I think, in solidarity. Look, we really believe if there's someone out there that has an addiction issue, we'll do everything we can to get them help through all the resources, all the partners that are out here amongst us tonight. But there is a very strong message. And that message is clear. And I think Biden stole my words on this. But I'm serious. We'll hunt you down if you are a dealer in this community. 
And you better worry when that knock comes at your door because it's gonna be the Queen Anne's County Drug Task Force. And we've got partners in law enforcement, state's attorney's office, officers that are out there on the streets, the corrections, etc., that are helping to make this happen. Queen Anne's County is a safe place. We are making sure that if you're selling out there, you're gonna get locked up. End of discussion. If you have an issue with addiction, we are gonna be your partner and we are here to help. I wanted to thank everybody that came out tonight. Together, obviously, we're making a difference. And we're making a huge difference. So hoping that next year or the year after, we will not be having Queen Anne's Goes Purple, but we'll be having a celebration that we've been able to get our hands around the opioid issues here within Queen Anne's County. I want to thank you all very much. Thank you, Sheriff, and thank you, Mr. State's Attorney. Just as a reminder, we're uh, coming near the end of our program. If you have not yet gotten your flashlight, uh, please do so. There may still be some up front, and there's some at the table back on Lawyer's Row. Uh, in lieu of candlelighting, we're going to do a flashlight illumination. So I have a couple more things. First, I'd like to recognize some people that haven't been mentioned yet. Uh, specifically, and this is, uh, this is from Warren, he's asked me to specifically mention these people. First is the Queen Anne's County Chamber of Commerce and its members for their support. Also the, <clears throat> excuse me, the work crews for the town of Centerville, which assisted in providing some of the infrastructure for this event, as well as officials from Queen Anne's County Government and the Queen Anne's County Parks and Recreation Department. As you can tell, it takes a number of organizations to make this event and our mission a success, so thank you to all of those. Next, I'd like to invite Mr. Tony Reno from Not My Child 2.0 to come forward. I believe he has a special presentation. Linda Friday. If I could have Ms. Linda Friday come forward, please. And also uh, Bobby Jeff and Pastor Bobby Timms. Well, with all the lights, I can't see anybody. <laughs> but I promise not to talk long. Normally, when I get in front of a microphone, that seems it's what all I do. So my name is Anthony Reno. Um, we founded Not My Child in 2017 after I lost my son, Anthony Jr. He's one of the pictures down here holding the fish in his hand. Um, this funds primarily uh, what it does is it, it it, it helps people in financial need, whether it's for funeral costs, memorials, uh, if somebody has an addiction issue and they go to counseling and they need co-pays covered. Uh, we have a joint uh, uh, membership with Compass Regional. We pay for the children who go there, which are quite a few. Two years ago at Compass for Camp New Dawn, there's actually 100 kids, 108 kids that went to that camp uh, two years ago before COVID. And out of that 108, 50%, 54 children were there due to um, a loss of a sibling, loved one, mother, father. That's a, that's a lot. But as we've seen lately, and mostly because of county initiatives, you've seen these numbers, you know, falling and falling, which is great. It, it looks like we're winning the battle on this. So if anybody out there knows that they need funds for somebody that they've lost somebody recently or they have some type of addiction problem and it's financial, please contact Not My Child. We're available to help you financially. Um, but no further ado, there's two people that are dear to my heart. Linda, thank you for inviting us. Um, I, I hope you invite us next year, which I'm sure we'll be here. Um, and Bobby Thames is dear to my heart. It's like a saint. He was the gentleman that was there on the scene when I lost my son. Um, he was pretty much like my angel in heaven that he takes care of me. Um, so what Not My Child would like to do is present a check for $2,500 to United Methodist Church's recovery program. And we'd also like to present a check for the Drug Coalition, Queen Anne's Goes Purple, for 2500 But again, I want to I want to thank everybody for coming out because you know it's, it's unfortunate that we have to have this these kind of conversations. But if you're going to have one, we're in a county and a community that far far and under is the greatest community to be in. Uh, I've had help from the sheriff's department to the state's attorney to the county commissioners and to small businesses to large, and just for patrons. We have so many events, and 
everybody pours their hat out in, in Queen Anne's County. And I think if there's going to be something done, it's, it's in this county where it makes a big difference. And I just want to appreciate everybody for coming out because this, what we have here is, is a testament to what we're doing. And I just want to appreciate everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Reno. If I could have uh, Pastor Kia Reed come forward for a closing prayer, and while we're waiting for Pastor Reed to come forward, if you have your flashlights, please illuminate them now. And I'd ask that you keep those illuminated as Pastor Reed gives us our closing prayer, and then we're going to have another moment of silence once the closing prayer is completed in remembrance of those that we have lost. Thank you. What an amazing opportunity to stand together unified with so many representatives of so many of our county agencies, organizations, to stand in solidarity with families, to every family member that's here tonight. We thank you. We thank you for coming. We thank you for sharing your stories, sharing the memories of those that you have lost. And I want to commend Mr. Warren Wright to the Drug Free Coalition, to the planners and all of you who have made it possible for us to be here tonight. Not only for the hard work that you have put in, that it takes months and months to pull this off, but where my heart is, is recognizing the spiritual support that we all need in fighting this crisis. So if you would join me as we bow our great heads to the Sovereign Lord, just have a song in my heart and we'll close in prayer. And it just simply goes like this. Pass me not all gentle Savior. Gracious Father, Father, we come to you on tonight with our hearts bowed in humble submission to your sovereignty. We thank you, Father, for the opportunity to stand with planners, to stand with organizers, to stand with family members, to stand with those who are yet to win the battle. And Father, through prayer, it is our public declaration that we acknowledge our limited ability. And so we submit to the resources of heaven. We submit, Father, to one that is higher than I. And on tonight, I ask that you would continue to bless, Lord God, with wisdom, with grace, with resources and support, every initiative that will be birthed out of this gathering tonight. Father, I stand to ask for your comfort to those, oh God, who still have the voids in their heart for the chains in their family, oh God. The links have been broken. I ask on today that you would grant us the wisdom. Give us strategies on how to win this battle. And Father, most of all, I ask, oh God, that as we are remembering, as the sheriff has said, that we will also reach a moment of celebration, to celebrate the accomplishments, to celebrate victory. And so, Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask, Father, that your Holy Spirit would be with each and every person that's here on tonight. We ask that as we leave this place, but never from your presence, 
that your grace will empower us to reach out to a neighbor in need. I pray for those, God, who you have given the charge through their several positions in the community to deal with those, Father, who are struggling, to deal with those who have been caught up in the addiction of, the, of drug dealing. And so, Father, we ask that it would no longer be attractive, that we would go to the root cause in the name of Jesus. And, Father, we decree over this community, over this county, and over this region through the power of the blood, because the victory was given in Calvary, we decree victory now. And you said that every knee would bow, so we command now every horde of hell. Yes, y'all asked me to bring the spiritual component in. We're going to deal with the enemy because we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. So we serve hell notice that Queen Anne's County stands unified against the hordes and the agenda of hell to take our community back. We find the work of the enemy in the name of Jesus and we declare liberty to the captive on tonight. Father, let your grace fill our hearts that we will extend your love through our words, through a hug. Father, we thank you on today and we declare tonight and on this, this season of Rosh Hashanah to be a beginning of months for this county that we'll begin to see a turnaround. I ask that you join me if you believe that God is able and is telling the Lord, thank you for this night. In Jesus' name, God cover us as we leave this place. Keep us safe as we travel. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you all tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, take a look around at all the lights, all the people that are here, and know this as you go. Every single one of you matters. Every single one of you can carry forth the mission that was set forth many years ago until the number that we celebrate is zero. You all matter. You all make a difference. I ask that you go forth and continue the mission. God bless you, and thank you. Good night.